it's a hard night that I'm almost not here. Um, I put a gun in my mouth that night and I That's was going right. to blow my head off. Um, I'm actually recording a video right now about suicide because um, I'm just seeing too much of it. And, and I realize there's lies we tell ourselves when, when the world collapses around us. And, and that's what happened to me. Um, you know, and it, it definitely my fault. Um, you know, oftentimes we are living in a victim society. Um, you know, I, I frequently lately, I'm starting to joke about, oh, do you want me to talk about the virus? Do you want me to talk about the pandemic? And uh, people are like, yes, talk about the pandemic. And I'm like, oh, I'm not talking about COVID. I'm talking about the victim mindset, the victim mindset that's pervading this nation. And uh, I think more and more people, when things go wrong, they want to see themselves as a victim when frequently, uh, not always, but 90% of the time it's us. And in that situation where I failed as a leader, it was me. It was me. I had made poor decisions. I had failed to lead myself. I had done what a lot of young leaders do, uh, you know, was saying, hey, do as I say, not as I do. Um, I was relying more on the rank on my uniform and less on my um, my actions and uh, was just kind of tripping all over myself. And then it culminated with a bad call on that mission in Afghanistan that, uh, you know, knock on wood, did not get anybody killed, but it, it, it definitely killed my uh, <laughs> my professional reputation at the time. And you're right. I got called in on the carpet and they said, you know, there were guys that said, kick this guy out. He's dangerous. He's going to get people killed. And to be told that you don't measure up in a community where your professional and operational reputation is everything was the greatest blow I've ever had in my life. Hence me sitting in a chair in my room that night waiting for the outcome. The next day I was supposed to go meet with the commanding officer and he was going to tell me, you know, what the decision was, were they going to take my trident or were they going to, um, you know, or what, what the decision was. And interesting. So many of us oftentimes make a decision, especially when it comes to suicide, where you don't know what the outcome is. You're basing it off a whole bunch of lies. You're basing it off. There's no hope. You're basing it off that it's the end, that there's no way forward. You're basing it off that, you know, the, the world will be better off without me. Or in this case, in my mind, the SEAL teams would be better off without me. I was an embarrassment. Um, and these are all lies, man. I, I tell people um, it's never too late, you know, and you never know what the path forward is going to be. You know, that's the, that's the craziness about this life. All we can do is focus on the moment and how we shape the future. You know, the past is the past and you learn from it and drive forward. And thankfully, I did not do that. Um, and thankfully, my commanding officer gave me a second chance. But it, and it was probably the greatest thing that ever happened to me. It was the hardest road I've ever walked. Like you said, the battlefield injuries I sustained, you know, being all shot up and taken around in the face. Most people wrongly think, oh, God, that must have been the hardest thing you ever went through. Nope. Failing as a leader and being told I didn't measure up for a period of time in the SEAL teams and earning back the trust and respect of the guys was the hardest road I've ever walked. Every day uh, I woke up knowing there were people who hated me, who wanted to see me fail because they didn't want to work with me. And I had to push that away and say, OK, man, focus on yourself. Focus on doing as good as you can do today and tomorrow will be a new day and we'll attack it again. And I had some great mentors, I had some great leaders who believed in me and said, hey, man, you know, we're going to give you a chance, but it's up to you, you know, be a victor, not a victim. And, uh, and I finally grew up through a really long, hard journey. I ended up going to ranger school. I ended yeah. up uh, building myself back up. I, I actually had a rock bottom moment in ranger school. And thankfully, once again, I had a leader who saved my career. But obviously, that whole story is told in the Trident but uh, by far, by far, that is the hardest road I've ever walked. And I think that forged more of an overcome mindset than anything in my life. So when you're listening to this, and, and if you're going through adversity, when, I, when we train resilience, I think both Jason and I, you know, having my own uh, badge of what I used to think I was a, I was a victim of, 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 you know, a lot of things. I was a victim of, you know, child abuse. I was a victim of violent childhood trauma. And today I'm a survivor. You know, I see that as, as, as not what what's wrong with me but just what happened to me and what i learned from it and if you're going through something one of the greatest mindsets for resilience is cultivating optimism this event isn't permanent 
it's not personal. It won't define me. It's not pervasive, which means this is just this moment. It won't apply to every aspect of my life. And there could be immense possibilities. It's like that idea that when one door closes, another door opens. And you actually went from having challenges as a leader to owning your part in it, seeing how you could take it, not personally, but as a possibility of learning more and, and went on to probably grow and become an even better leader than you than you were because you saw the parts of you you wanted to change and, and went to ranger school and, and learned some stuff that you needed to know. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, hands down, I mean, it really started. I mean, now I speak on leadership all over the place. And, uh, and you know, frequently I'll have people say, oh, yeah, we're going to bring you in. You know, I got a question for you because you're a leadership expert. <laughs> no, I am a student of leadership. And that journey started back when I failed. And I think that's probably why I have such an appreciation for leadership, because, you know, I've seen good leaders and bad leaders. At one point, I was a bad leader. Um, and it doesn't make me perfect. I still sometimes make mistakes as a leader within my own company, you know, but uh, that that's life. And, and that's where people need to understand so many people. So many really, especially today, we are trying to create these black and white scenarios everywhere around us. Like literally, I mean, race is a perfect example right now. Um, gender is a perfect example, you know, gay or straight, you know, and the world is not that way. The world really is 50 shades of uh, 50 shades of gray, man. So you have to be able to look at all these things as a leader and understand, well, you know, I'm strong in this area, maybe I'm weak in this area, but no matter what, we're always growing and driving forward. And, and that's where I've come in my life. I just appreciate leadership. And, um, you know, because I've, <laughs> I've crawled through the trenches.